and we are a go. So hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, this is a event that this is the first time that we're doing this kind of thing. Um, COVID-19 has made us very creative. Um, and this is uh, National Transfer Week and we wanted to kick things off with one of our longtime partners, Newman University. Um, and we tried to think about what could we present to faculty, staff, and students about the transfer process um, that would be good information regardless of who you are in the PIT community. Um, and so I'm really, really pleased to welcome Lauren um, from Newman University. Um, her, really her presentation. Uh, she stuck my picture on it, which was very nice, um, but it's really her presentation. Um, about ways that we can assist transfer students, whether we are with them at the beginning of their admissions process, students who may come into admissions knowing that they're interested in transferring to a four year after graduation, whether they are coming to student affairs um, to talk about transferring to a four year after graduation. Um, or if you are a student watching this, things that you should be prepared for and things that you need to think about in order to make the process as seamless as possible. And so now I will turn it over to Lauren. Thank you, Kamira. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to be here today. Um, so I worked with Kamira to put this together um, for those things that maybe um, we all kind of know, but we don't put in writing or put in the forethought about how to work with transfer students as staff, but also um, as a transfer student, what are those things you should be thinking of at the beginning of your journey um, to a four-year degree or in the middle or as you transfer um, in that process from your two-year institution to your four-year institution. So there's a little bit about Newman in here, but there is also a lot of just good information and some statistics about transfer students and how they move, what they do. And so I look forward to chatting and answering any questions that you may have. Um, feel free to put uh, questions in the chat if you want to discuss them later and we'll be able to take questions at the end. Um, and then I'd be happy with any of the students that are on here too is to answer specific questions to Newman about our transfer process. So I'm gonna share my screen and start um, the presentation. Can everyone see it? Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. So first of all, Kamir and I wanted to talk about ways we could work together and how we could help transfer students succeed as staff members, but also as transfer students, things to think about, things to plan for and think about as they look towards that next step, um, or even if they are thinking about that next step. Um, some data that I pulled um, just from some recent um, journals that we have, 80% um, of students enter community college or two-year schools um, with the goal of transferring to a four-year institution. That's a very large population of students, if you think about it. Um, so if you have 80% of your students coming in, if you think about how many actually end up going on to a four-year degree, it's about 23% of all the students that enter in. Um, and if you look at that, um, a good portion of those students are your students from underrepresented populations. Um, so there's the 51% of all Latino students and 41% of all African American students are actually starting their college journey at the community college or at a two-year institution level. So you're getting a lot of students that maybe are first generation um, underrepresented populations and how are we preparing those students that maybe don't have the same tools as the students go, that go directly into four-year institutions to plan for transfer as they start their institution. And we're looking also at that gap. So the gap between 80% who want to transfer and then 23% that actually do transfer. So how do we close that gap? How do we make sure that students really understand the transfer process and make it seamless for them no matter where they're going to transfer to after they end their, their time at their four-year institution? So Kamira and I chatted about the um, barriers that transfer students often see. Um, I'm sure you, these are very normal to everyone on this call that um, you either deal with them as a student or you see your students deal with them on a daily basis. 
Um, cost is definitely a huge one. Um, and the life piece goes with the cost, you know, am I able to work a full-time job as well as get financial aid and pay for my degree? Um, how long am I doing to take, to go through my degree, my associate's degree, my bachelor's degree? You know, am I paying attention to my financial aid and when does that run out? Um, on the credit law side, um, I know students, you know, are looking to complete an associate's degree at PIT and at two-year institutions, um, but are they looking to plan when they enter into the two-year institution to transfer to one or two schools so the credits that they're taking are able to transfer in, and are they doing that in a way with their advisor um, that they really know these credits are going to transfer here and this is going to shorten my path to get that bachelor's degree that I want. On the advising side, are students utilizing their advisors? So any students on this call, um, definitely reach out to advisors. They can help you, they can connect you. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but are students getting the advising? And are advi advisors doing the exploration with students to see maybe where they wanna go if they say, yes, my end goal is a bachelor's degree? Are you asking those questions about what school are you looking at or what schools are you looking at? And then student preparedness, you know, it's, it's Students need to be ready for that four-year institution um, and the differences that happen with the four-year institution versus a two-year institution and the different types of institutions you have as options. Um, you know, a PIT is very different than, you know, a Penn State. So if you're going from PIT to Penn State main campus, that's going to be a very different experience and are you prepared to deal with that experience? Kamira, feel free to jump in at any point in time if you want to add to anything. No, so far we are in sync. Wonderful. Um, so we talked a little bit about ways to start helping students. And I said earlier about identifying destination institutions early. So if a student comes in to PIT and says, I want to get a bachelor's degree, that next question should be, where are you looking for that bachelor's degree? Um, and it may be two or three schools, it may be 50, um, but if advisors can help narrow down that choice path, um, that can help the student prepare to make that change that institution and maybe really help them um, as they plan because maybe they're not quite sure. Um, but maybe you know what major they're interested in and then you can say here are the good institutions, here are the institutions we have partnerships with, here are the institutions that that major is going to allow you to transfer credits in and the most credits. So it can be a partnership with the advising and the admission piece, um, depending on what the student's goal is. And then obviously all four-year institutions want to plan for students to complete their associate's degree at their two-year institution. That is the best thing for two-year institutions, best thing for four-year institutions, and the best thing for students. Um, if you look at that data that I put up there, um, it's over 50 plus two-year institutions that were, um, that were surveyed. 49% of students are more likely to complete a bachelor's degree in four years and 22% are more likely to complete in six years if they come out of their community college or their two-year institution with an associate's degree. That's a very large statistic. That's, that's you know, again, that's like 60, 75% of students um, that is going to increase the number of people that end up getting that bachelor's degree long-term if they complete that associate's degree. And then you want to think about that end goal. You know, where do you want to be? What what career are you interested in? Not just what major. Um, you know, where do you see um, yourself in five years? Some of those questions can maybe help a student identify what career path that they really want um, in the long term, and then you can help them identify the major that makes the most sense to get them there as fast as possible. We use the Bureau of Labor Statistics a lot and uh, at Newman to help us decide which programs to add, which programs maybe aren't as um, popular anymore, um, but also talk about the job prospects. So what are the hiring rates for the next three, four or five years down the road? What are the areas that are growing? And maybe those make a little bit more sense than some of the areas that aren't going to get you a career path. Again, we want students, especially at Newman, to come out with a degree where they can get a job right after they graduate. And that's something that's really important to us. So having that career path start and having that thought process at the beginning can allow for that transition to happen a lot easier. And if I can just jump in for a second um, before you switch to slide. You know, one of the things um, that you mentioned is definitely something that we do at PIT as well. And that is 
uh, go back and take a look at the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Um, and I think that you'll find that um, institutions tend to do that across the board when they're developing curriculum and seeing um, what the trends are for how they can best serve students, not just today, but also tomorrow, two, five, 10 years from now, um, what programs make the most sense to add or alter or phase away. Um, and if you are a student, you know, and you think you know what you want to do, but you're not 100% sure, that's a resource that can help you figure that out. Um, because a lot of times what you want to do and what you think the major is or what you think the program is are not necessarily, you know, the, the same thing. There's often more than one pathway to get to where you are thinking about. Um, and another thing I just want to reinforce is that as students, you know, we don't always know what we want to be when we grow up. Um, and I know that you're grown up, but you don't necessarily know what you want to be when you grow up. Um, Kamari, you just muted yourself. Oh, that should not have happened. Um, it doesn't have to be a concrete plan, um, but just a general idea somewhere um, so that we have an idea about how to best help you get to where you want to be. Great, I agree. And I think about when you said there's lots of different paths to get there. I think very much about our psychology program and our social work program. Um, that's a great one. If you're looking to do individualized therapy with students, you can go in either one of those pathways and still come out to that same end goal with a different degree. So you have to think about those things where you want to be, and then your advisor can help you get there. So as we talk about those barriers, we went through one by one to just kind of um, identify each barrier and then also some, some thoughts to get um, on the other side of that and help with those barriers. So with the cost and the financial aid barrier, um, lots of small private schools actually offer transfer scholarships. It is a newer trend in higher ed, um, but researching those transfer scholarships um, on different websites can be really helpful for students to give them an idea of what that cost is going to be. Um, also making sure students understand that financial aid does run out. They have a certain number of semesters that they can use financial aid for, and then at some point they are going to be able to, or they're going to have to pay on their own. Um, and that's something that a lot of students don't realize and don't know. So it's something that at the beginning, as they're starting to identify where they wanna go, what they wanna do, making sure students know that, that they will run out. They cannot just keep going year after year, semester after semester to complete a degree if they wanna to get to the end goal of a bachelor's degree. Then obviously apply for anything out there, everything outside scholarships, anything on this, the school's website that you're interested in. Um, there are a lot of very specific scholarships for transfer students, for first gen students, um, for diverse minority students. Um, look for those scholarships that are out there and search those websites to find one that really fits. I know there's a couple of websites that literally do the searching for you. Um, but if you are you know, a student that is interested in nursing, a student that's interested in criminal justice from this area, um, you have this background, there may be a very specific scholarship for you. Um, so you wanna make sure you're doing those, that research um, and looking for those scholarship opportunities too. And then utilize financial aid. Um, you you want to make sure that you are talking to financial aid, not only at your current institution at PIT, but also at the institutions that you're looking at. They can give you an idea of costs out of pocket. They have net price calculators on their website. They have all the scholarship information. Um, so you want to make sure you do your research at any institution that you're looking at and then reach out to those uh, professional staff members because that is what they're there for, especially after you apply. They can give you information on what that scholarship looks like and what that out of pocket cost is going to be. Yeah, and for um, students, um, you know, especially if you are um, a SSS participant, that's part of what we do in the department is we will help you find um, scholarship information. Um, and I can't uh, agree with Lauren uh, just anymore. Apply for it, let them tell you no. Don't decide for yourself that you don't qualify. Apply for everything that's out there. Um, yes, you'll get some no's, but you might get some unexpected yeses. Um, and so you just want to, especially when it comes to paying for college, because college is expensive, 
Um, it is a debt that follows you and you wanna make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck. Um, so reach out to anyone in student affairs and financial aid, um, both here and again at the institution that you're interested in transferring to after graduating from PIT, um, just to make sure that you have all of the information that's available to you. Yes, and I, I, I'll build off of what Kamara says too. When you go to your four-year institution, four institution, you have to think about cost being more. Um, typically, your four-year institutions, the out-of-pocket cost is going to be more. So you also have to plan for that and think about that as you transfer because we don't want that to be a hidden cost. We want you to know it and be able to plan for that additional cost depending on what school you're going to. Um, and every school is a little bit different. You may find you know, state schools that are very similar to, um, to uh, your um, private schools as well. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about things that I have seen um, just this year with our transfer student packages, financial aid packages, but plan for that additional cost or know what the cost is gonna be so you have an idea how to save and how to manage that money going forward at the different institution. So I've talked about financial aid barriers, um, life. We all know that life gets in the way of meeting any of your goals that you have. Um, and we know that's specific um, for transfer students. Usually that's um, a larger barrier because students are often a little bit older, um, maybe adult students going back to get their degree. Maybe you took a break in the middle. Um, maybe you had a family. Um, so these barriers you know, are challenging because you, you have to be able to manage your time um, and make it work. And we don't want you to fail. We want to set you up for success. So the first thing we want to talk about is the time commitment and the scheduling. If you are working during the day because you have to support your family, um, you need to know you need a program that maybe is an online option or an evening option, um, something like that. If you are a student that needs that in-person experience, you wanna make sure that the school has that option. And maybe you want a smaller school that someone has, um, is there and available that you can talk with faculty and advisors more, um, but you need to know that about yourself. So a little bit of that self-reflection to know what you need to be successful as a student. And then a little bit of that information from your advisors, from your counselors um, to talk about how they think you will be successful because they've been working with you for two years. Um, as advisors on the other side of that, um, talking with those students and honestly having those conversations and helping them identify programs that fit those needs, uh, they're out there. I can tell you that. That's the one thing I know is that those programs are out there for students and may take a little bit more effort to find them, um, but any help that you can provide to students as you help them identify what they want, um, also helping them identify programs that maybe fit their work-life um, balance, family life balance as well. Also, you need to think about the difference between going part-time and going full-time. I know a lot of our um, students do only go part-time, but that does affect cost and, and scholarship dollars. At Newman specifically, we have scholarships for students, but you have to go full-time, and that means a minimum of 12 credits a semester. Um, if you go below that, you can still get financial aid, but you then pay per credit, which is different than what you would get with that scholarship. It may be a benefit to do that based on your experience and what you need, and that's absolutely fine, um, but it may end up costing you more. So you just need to do a little bit of that research to look into the cost um, and see what the differences are and make sure you know the difference between part-time and full-time at each institution so your advisor can best give you the information about how that would work. Lastly, if you are ever struggling um, and you are like, I don't know if I can be successful this semester. Um, don't just stop showing up. Um, advisors, I know you, we chase people down and we try to find them, um, but I can't tell you how challenging it is once you have that semester where maybe you weren't successful, how that affects you long term. So talking about how we can make it work for the semester or get you through or make changes so that semester doesn't affect your transfer prospects long term is extremely important. Um, and your advisors know this and they want to help. Um, same with them on the admission side. I have conversations all the time with our transfer students when they say, you know, I'm struggling this semester, what should I do? I give them the best um, possible opportunities to be successful and tell them exactly what they need to do to really help them be successful in the transfer process. So reach out, make sure you connect, um, and don't just stop showing up.
please don't just stop. Please don't just stop showing up. Um, I cannot stress how detrimental that is to your educational process. Um, W's are always better than X, guys. And so if you know that there's something going on that's gonna keep you from being successful, be honest with yourself about that. And you know, those of us in student affairs, we don't necessarily need to know the ins and outs and the whys and the wherefores if you're not comfortable sharing all of that with us but give us enough information so that we know how to help you, okay? Whether it's connecting you to an outside resource, whether it's um, acting as a liaison between you and your professor, whether it's just having a conversation with you about how we're going to complete this term before moving on into the next term, um, whether it's connecting you with tutoring, whatever that is, you just have to give us enough information so we know how to help you be successful because that is what we want for you. Um, next thing on our list, credit loss. Um, this is extremely important to start planning early. Um, you don't want to just take an English course and not know that transfers in specifically to the English you want. And that's why identifying those couple institutions that you want to transfer to is extremely important because it could be you have to take this one English and it goes to all of the different institutions you're looking at. But maybe there's a couple institutions where that English doesn't come in. So that could change your career path or change your choice of college, or maybe it lets you know that you have to look in, in your class schedule to add both of these courses. Um, so having those ideas of where you wanna transfer can really help minimize that credit loss. And then you also wanna research any school's um, policies on trans transferring credits. Newman will transfer up to 90 credits into our institution. And we actually have an adult program, which is fully online accelerated, it's called our ACE program, limited majors, but that does take prior learning credits. Our other programs don't. So you have to be kind of a little bit savvy about understanding the differences between programs, um, as well as the options and how they bring in credits. Um, every school is a little bit different. Um, some schools will bring in up to 75 credits. Um, some schools will honestly only go based by um, credit by credit. Um, so you need to make sure you're taking that into account as you plan. Um, and again, that goes back to researching your institutions earlier, especially if you know you want to stay local, you know, you, you live around here, you don't want to go far. Um, if you don't want to live on campus and you want it to be an easy drive um, or you want it to be virtual, you just have to think about those things as you plan so you're not um, losing any of those credits as you go forward. Yeah, here's the thing. Um, and students have heard me say this a lot. The school that you want to transfer holds all the cards they tell us what they're going to take. We don't tell them. <laughs> um, we work with them. We work in conjunction with institutions. We try to have articulation and affiliation agreements in place that best benefit you as a PIT uh, student and graduate moving into um, a four-year experience. But there are going to be programs um, even within an institution that one program may take a course and another program may not simply because of the requirements of that major. Um, so you just want to prepare yourself for the fact that, yes, you do have an associate's degree, but there may be some classes that you've taken here that the school of your choice or the program of your choice has said, uh, you know, we really think we want something a little different. Um, but again, those conversations are conversations that if you let us know that you're interested in transferring, we can have um, early and often. Yeah, and that goes directly into that advising piece of connecting with advisors early um, so you can talk about these processes um, and they can look into, here are the credits that you need to take. Um, and you need to ask questions. Maybe you're not sure where you wanna go yet. Um, as a student, you wanna ask those questions of, I'm thinking about doing this um, and allowing that help to, to come. Um, and it's okay if things change. Um, you just have to know that could change your path a little bit. Um, but making sure that you are having that open dialogue with your advisor. Um, and honestly, even at that four-year institution, maybe you apply to Newman as a freshman coming in um, and then decided to go to PIT, but then want to transfer back to Newman afterwards. 
you can create that dialogue between your advisors um, at your four-year institution or destination institution while you're having that same conversations. And we work together, obviously, Kamira and I work together um, all the time to, um, to make sure that we're having these conversations about how best um, to advise students and then also to minimize their credit loss. Kamira, do you wanna talk a little bit about the student, the student preparedness piece? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, transfer after graduation um, requires a, a relationship between you as the student and us as your support system. Um, if you let us know what you're thinking about, we can work with you and help advise you. Um, and that means having conversations about the courses that you're taking here at PIT, um, what we know may transfer, what we know may not transfer, but it's still to your benefit to make you a stronger student. Um, so one of those things are strengthening courses. We do have strengthening courses here at PIT. Um, a lot of institutions do have them. They do not typically transfer to a four year, but the purpose of a strengthening course is to help make sure that you are um, as prepared as you can be to be a successful student. And so it may not transfer, but it's still to your benefit, um, especially when you're transferring from a smaller institution like PIT to maybe um, a larger institution um, where, you know, like a, we talked earlier, a Penn State main campus where it's very easy to get lost in the shuffle um, because it's just so large. Um, but because you've had these um, strengthening courses, because we've built a strong foundation with you while you were here, um, it's a little bit easier once you get there. Um, you also want to be having conversations about uh, options other than transfer early in, the, in, in your academic career here at PIT. Um, maybe you're not sure you want to transfer. Maybe you know you want to transfer, but you don't want to go straight through. You want to get your degree from PIT and then you want to move on to a four year, but you want a little bit of a break in there. Maybe because you have family obligations or because of a job that you have that might pay for you to get your four year degree. Um, so just having those kind of conversations and, and mapping out a tentative plan um, that you do have to be flexible with. It is a process. Um, so please don't get discouraged. Um, but mapping out that tentative plan of here's what I think I'd like to do. I'd like to graduate from PIT and then I'd like to go into the workforce for a couple of years and then transfer to this school, understanding that, you know, there is a statute of limitations on credits. Um, and so if you're planning on going to a four year, maybe not immediately making that a part of the conversation, letting us know that so we can make sure that we help you figure out how, um, how best to, to utilize the credits that you've, you've uh, gotten here at PIT. Um, again, it is a process. Um, you're going to be looking at a lot of different schools. A lot of different schools um, have different processes and procedures for how they handle transfer students. Um, the application process is going to be different. The fees might be different. Um, what they require from you might be different. So you just don't get discouraged. Just make sure you keep yourself organized and you know what school is looking for what and what school has the best benefits for you as a student transferring in with an associate's degree. And finally, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, let us know. You know, we don't always know if you have a concern. Um, you really have to let us know. Um, and if you let us know what your concern is, we can either connect you with a resource inside PIT or maybe help you reach out to a resource at your destination institution. Again, obviously, if you're talking about a Newman, obviously we have a great relationship with Newman. We know who to reach out to and say, listen, our student is about to graduate. They want to come into Newman and they have some concerns or questions so that we can get that answered for you or get those concerns rectified for you. We can't help you if we don't know. So let us help you connect um, to resources. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out to any one of us. Thanks, Kamira. Um, next thing we want to talk about is managing your expectations. These are more things you want to think about after you transfer because we know the transfer process just doesn't end when you get admitted and deposit at your next or your destination institution. We want to make sure that you are successful there in that transfer process. 
Um, so those expectations, um, you need to know, it helps you prior to transfer, but also when you get there as well. Um, so you have to know that there will be some major specific requirements, depending on the institution and the major you choose, that may be a little bit different, as Kamira said, that you need to think about. Um, our nursing program is extremely rigorous. Um, you will spend three years at Newman even after um, you come in with an associate's degree. So something you need to know about if you're thinking about nursing. Now, if you pick a completely different degree um, that you wanna look at for your four-year institution, you may be able to get into out in two years. So you just have to know those things and know that they will be different at each institution. And you wanna have that path planned out prior to graduation from your associate's degree so you know exactly what your time commitment is going to be longer term. And then you wanna know that things will be different. You know, you have your comfort level at PIT, you have your resources that you know where to find them, you know where to go for this office, you know who to contact for this. It's just gonna be different because they're different people. Um, so you have to plan for that and be okay being a little bit vulnerable and asking those questions again that maybe you got answered at your, your first institution. And maybe, you know, again, you've been through the process, you've been to, um, you know, your college level institution already, um, but do you know where the registrar's office is? Do you know where advising is? Um, those are the simple little things that, you know, hurt students if they aren't able to find them out um, or if they struggle to, to connect with those different offices in those different areas. Um, but being different doesn't mean it's bad. Different is fine. It's just, are you connecting early to your resources at your destination institution um, to be able to get ready for that change when things maybe get a little bit difficult um, because you're just in a new environment. Um, a term that we like to use uh, within this is transfer capital. Um, and it's essentially the knowledge and um, the understanding that our transfer students um, gain to get, navigate this process. So the more you know at PIT, the more you connect to your resources at PIT, the easier the transfer process will be when you get to your destination institution. So if you do know how to find the registrar's office, and you know they help with um, credits, then you can know, all right, I have to find the registrar's office and it's just a difference of finding it um, on our campus. So a little bit of these things to help you prepare for that time after transfer as well. Um, so you're successful at both institutions on both ends. My other suggestion is attend events on campus. Um, you know, your foreign institutions always come to your campuses as well. I love coming to PIT. Um, my coworker Josh Bittler also comes to PIT, works with our, our transfer nursing students. Um, so we're there to help. We can start that relationship on your campus. Um, but then come to our campus to get familiarized with our campus. Come to orientation. Um, our spring orientation is January 7th. So if you're a student that's looking to come in the spring, we are gonna hold it in person and we're gonna hold it virtually as well. But that allows you to get your student ID, that allows you to connect with people that are on campus as well, puts face to names for those emails that you've been getting. Um, it allows you to complete checklist items that maybe you didn't know were still outstanding. Um, so those things really make a difference in making that transfer process easy. When you get to the campus and you start your semester, there's transfer specific events at a lot of different places. Um, you know, maybe just um, student affairs things that clubs and groups that you want to get involved in. Um, if you were involved at PIT, um, there are those clubs and groups at Newman as well. So you want to make sure that you're staying connected to the campus, even at your new institution, because that will help you be successful because you will feel just as connected to that destination institution as well as your former institution because those same places are out there. So you wanna look for them and attend those groups. And then we've talked about those resources, find them early, use them often. If you need tutoring in a class and right away you're like, oh, I'm struggling a little bit, tutoring is available, do you know where to get it? Um, are you questioning financial aid and you don't know what you need to do next? Go to the financial aid office. Use those re, uh, resources early so you're not struggling at the last minute to get them and find them um, when you're in a bind. And then if all else fails, go back to PIT and reach out to Kamira, to any one of your advisors and advisors, obviously, um, you know who to connect them with. You know, you know how to navigate this process at your institution. Um, and it's a super easy process to email me, email Josh and say, hey, I have this student just started at Newman, has a question about this, and how do I help them find it? And that is what we're here for. 
Um, so please utilize both sides. We are partner institutions in this, um, and we are here to make sure students are successful on both sides of the transfer piece. All right, so if you are a transfer student and for advisors, for everyone in mission, um, these are things you can just relay. You probably already do relay to your students. Um, number one, get good grades. Um, we talk about transfer scholarships um, and that they're available, but your GPA is literally currency. Um, at Newman, I'll show you our scale of scholarships. It is exactly tied to GPAs. So the higher your GPA, the more scholarship money you're typically eligible for, um, depending on the institution that you're looking at. If you're looking at those merit scholarships, they could range from different schools. Maybe they only start at a certain GPA, but you just want to know that and know that your work in the classroom at your two-year institution um, really does translate specifically into scholarship dollars. Um, Going to a two-year institution, going to PIT can be that reset button. Maybe if you didn't do well in high school um, and didn't, uh, didn't perform as well as you would want, that is what we look at. We, lo we don't look at your high school anymore. Um, once you transfer, once you have a full um, semester's worth of credits, that is what we look at. So if you were a 2-5 student in high school and you are now a 3-5 student at PIT, you are going to get more scholarship dollars based off of that. So please, please, please do your best um, to tell students to, um, to do well in classes, but also for students that are joining us, um, make sure you know that that GPA transfers to scholarship dollars. And then Phi Theta Kappa is, a, um, is an honor society specifically for transfer students at two-year institutions. Um, look into that. You have a chapter on your campus and Kamira can tell you a little bit more about that. Um, but there are often very specific PTK scholarships offered. Um, and there's also scholarships offered through Phi Theta Kappa um, that you can apply for um, and then maybe get an additional one at your school. So talking about those scholarships, keep looking, keep applying for everything. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, Newman scholarships specifically. Can I hop in for just one second and tie it back to what we talked about financial aid? Um, to bring it all together, one of the key reasons that you want to get good grades is because of the GPA um, being tied to scholarship dollars. Remember, Pell is not forever. Financial aid has a limit on it. And so the uh, unfortunate reality is, is that the further you go through your educational process, um, the less financial aid you become eligible for. And so how do you make up that difference between financial aid and what's coming out of your pocket, scholarships, grants. So this is really the way um, to kind of bridge that gap to keep your out of pocket costs down. Um, so again, even if you just think that you may be interested in transferring to a four year after you graduate from PIT, maybe sort of thinking about it, always have in the back of your mind that your, your, your academic performance and progress here has a huge impact on how much it may cost you um, when you're at your destination institution. Kamira, will you continue on with the transfer portfolio? Because I know we discussed that and how that can help your students specifically. Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, you want to make sure, again, that you're having a, a conversation with us about what schools you're looking at so that we can help you uh, piece together what school has what requirements for transfer admission so that we can then help you put together all of those things that they may be looking for um, as an application so that you have it kind of at the touch of your fingertips. So if school A, you know, may be looking for a application with the essay and transcripts, um, or maybe they're looking for transcripts and application and something else, a personal statement or whatever it is that they say that they need to make your packet complete, you wanna make sure that you let us know what schools you're looking at and what that school is requiring so we can help you have that portfolio together. So really at the touch of a button when you say, you know what, I'm ready to apply to Newman or I'm ready to apply to you know another four year, you don't have to kind of scrounge around and figure out where you're gonna get these things. It's already together. Um, we'll help you get your transcript from our academic records office. Um, we'll help you know go through, navigate, edit a personal statement. We'll help you with your application. If it's something that we can kind of work on together, we'll be happy to help you navigate through that. 
um, but really just making sure that you have it all together so that it's ready for you when you're ready to, to apply to your destination institution. Um, and you know, the final piece on, on this slide is to, to be conscious of your end goal, but be aware that you may have to be flexible on how you get there. Guys, life happens. Life happens. Everyone um, at PIT, everyone in your admissions department, everyone in your student affairs department, everyone at your destination school is fully aware that life happens. <laughs> okay, the best laid plans um, get derailed. And you may really want to graduate from PIT and then immediately go to a four year um, and something happens to keep you from being able to do that delay does not deny. Okay, so you just have to be remember what it is that you want to do and just, you know, if something happens if an obstacle occurs okay take a breath reset. Talk to us let's figure out how we're going to help you navigate that obstacle. Um, it may be a different pathway. You know, we talk a lot to students, um, especially students who are looking to get into our pre-nursing program, that sometimes the pa better pathway to where you wanna be is actually our CMA program. Um, you know, because you have this idea in your mind, well, there's multiple ways on how we're going to get there. Um, there's not just one straight path. So always remember to be flexible um, in, in how you get there and you'll get there and we'll do our best to help you get there. Um, but just know that again, life happens and sometimes you gotta, the word for 2020 is pivot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, sometimes you're going to have to. Agreed. The word for 2020 is definitely pivot. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to give a little bit um, at the end of our presentation specific information to Newman for advisors and for students as well. Um, so if you are interested in transferring specifically to Newman, our application for the spring of 2021 as well as the fall of 2021 is now currently open. We are rolling admission um, and the application is on our website. So you just need to go to www.newman.edu slash apply um, or click apply on our website and you will find it. It's super easy to find, um, but apply there. And it's honestly 10, 15 minutes and that's about it. Um, the required items that we need, we need official transcripts from all institutions that you attended. Um, so even if you went somewhere else other than PIT, you need to send that trans that uh, uh, transcript in as well because we will look at your overall cumulative GPA. Um, if you haven't received an associate's degree, we will also need your high school transcript. Um, this is specifically for financial aid purposes um, because we need the last transcript that you have a degree date on. Um, so it's not because we're looking at, at transcripts and using them to help make decisions. Um, we just need those for financial aid purposes for that graduated graduation date there. Um, if you are reviewed and um, are, be, are admitted to Newman um, for right now, just so you are aware, because of COVID, we actually dropped our deposit amount to $55 for the um, fall of 2020 and the spring of 2021 to $55. Um, so if you are a student that's looking at those two times, or obviously 2021 20 already happened, but spring of 2021, if you're looking at that, um, definitely make that deposit. If you deposit and decide you life happens and you don't want to come to fall, we will not change that deposit amount. So if you deposit now, that means that $55 will carry you over if you defer to the fall. And then any students that are looking for the fall of 2021, that deposit does move back to the $300, um, which is a flat fee for everyone across the board, resident or commuter, it doesn't really matter which. Um, Obviously, we talked a lot about how to connect or, you know, we should be connecting. Um, here are the ways to connect to Newman's campus. Um, we have open houses. We actually are hosting an open house tonight. Um, but we have specific transfer breakout sessions for every single open house we do now. Um, we do that purposefully because we know you have different questions as transfer students. Um, we also encourage any advisors, if you want to come to this event, we want you to come to our events. We're inviting you to off campus or our on campus events as well, as well as our virtual events, um, because we want you to know Newman and be comfortable um, when you have the conversations with students about what Newman has to offer and you can give them some of that insight, maybe if they haven't visited. Um, so feel free if you want to come reach out to me, we'll get you on the guest list so you can listen in to our open houses or come to our on campus open houses whenever we have them again, um, hopefully sooner rather than later. 
We are offering currently on-campus tours. So we're doing Thursdays um, in the month of October and we will be doing Wednesdays and Thursdays in November. Um, and then we also are offering Saturday tours. So any students that wanna come visit, please feel free to come out on those days. You can sign up for those tours right on our website. Um, and we are doing our best to keep them socially distanced as well as um, making sure that we are keeping everyone on campus um, safe and healthy by managing where we're allowed to um, have students go. Um, so we can't go everywhere, but you can see a lot of the main academic buildings and places that you would be as a student on campus. And then we have one on one scheduler appointments with transfer counselors. Um, so with myself, with Josh Bittler, um, it is set up time where you have a half an hour um, directly with your know, transfer counselor that you can set up at your convenience, you can sign up for those online as well. Um, and at times if we have your, um, if we have your uh, transcripts already, we can give you an instant decision. Um, so you want to look at those options as well. Um, and counselors and advisors at PIT, feel free to join um, with your students. We love having those conversations. Maybe students aren't quite sure which questions to ask, and maybe you're that advocate with them. If they're like, hey, I scheduled this appointment with Newman, do you want to join? Um, absolutely. We want to be able to have those conversations with everyone involved and make sure we're getting the best information to not only our students, but also to our advisors are helping um, get students through this process. And if I can just hop in for a second, for those of us, uh, our PIQ students who are SSS participants, if there's any transfer fees that are associated with transferring to Newman or to any school after you graduate from PIT, um, we do have the, um, uh, we offer fee waiver assistance um, to our SSS participants. So that's just uh, another thing to keep in mind. Great. So to bring it back to the scholarship and the money side of things, um, this is for the fall of 2021. And like I said, that scholarship amount is specifically tied to GPAs. Um, this is all on our website, so it's very easy for anyone to find. Um, but we want students to know, we wanna be transparent with students about what their scholarship will look like with their GPA. So if you're a top student, you have a 3.5 to a 4.0, and you are a member of PTK, you're looking at an $18,000 $18, scholarship to Newman that you get, that's before any financial aid. It's before Pell or SEOG or state grant. Um, so that really does build up um, on top of your need-based aid. Um, and I have seen some students pay zero out of pocket. Now that does include some loans, um, but I've seen students literally pay zero and have a zero balance. And then students living on campus, I actually just saw, like I said, I would talk about these before, I just saw a financial aid package, which is $9,000 for the entire year. It's a transfer student with max need-based aid and max scholarship dollars. Um, so $9,000 to attend a private institution and live on campus um, is an extremely good way to finance your education. Um, and we can also break those down and we can do um, payments. So you don't have to do that large lump sum payment at the beginning of the semester. We can space those out over 10, um, 10 months as well to make that payment a little bit more manageable. Um, so as you're looking at these things, this is Newman specific. Um, I can, you know, walk you through those things, take a look at transcripts and say, here's what I can see, here's what I, I know that you're going to get based on what your scholarships look like, and then we can talk about the FAFSA process as well. And that's all we have for you today. So I um, want to make sure that we answer any questions that anyone has, um, can be specifically about Newman, can be um, just about the transfer process in general. Um, feel free to throw them in the chat if you don't want to speak up, but we would Definitely love if you want to just unmute yourself and then um, ask any questions that you have. Um, good afternoon. Um, unfortunately, I just came in from um, clinical, so that's why I, I knew you were going to have this lecture. Yeah. So um, I'm a final year student in PIT, almost running up in December. Um, one of the questions I have is, do you have to have your um, NCLEX certification before you apply or do you have just graduated from the school before you apply to Newman? Yeah, so you don't need to have your NCLEX certification to apply. Um, you don't actually have to graduate to apply either. So you can do that application prior to graduation. Um, and we will know if you put on your application, here's your expected date of graduation, what to look for. So we know we can request those updated transcripts. 
Um, if you're graduating in December and looking to come um, for the spring, know that there's some limits on the programs that are offered in the spring versus in the fall. Um, so obviously, like I said, those transfer appointments um, are really good ways to, to talk with a transfer counselor about the different options and the different pathways that you could come to Newman and the semesters that would be best. Okay, like for, like for example, I have my master's in education. Okay. So, and I have done almost all the science um, prerequisites. So and maybe- For when... um, nursing? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. if you have a bachelor's degree already, um, you would apply for nursing second degree. Um, and that second degree program, there are a couple um, courses that you have to take anatomy and physiology one and two, microbiology and chemistry, as well as statistics, nutrition, and um, developmental psychology. The chemistry is one that's a little bit different. You wanna to talk directly to a counselor at Newman. We can tell you more about that one um, because the equivalencies for that one are a little bit more challenging. Um, yeah, that's so what I've done. I've done all that because the chemistry I took was more of the advanced chemistry. Okay. With clinical yep. and all that. So all these um, classes or courses you just mentioned, I have all of them already done. Yeah, and just, just connect because we can talk about that chemistry piece because they're very specific about that chemistry in the nursing program. Um, but if you want to reach out, my contact information is right there and I can set you up with a scheduler appointment to go through your transcripts as well as um, any questions you may have. Okay, that, would, that sounds great. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. What else? What are the questions? So for the transfer, is a two-year program, right? For nursing, no, it is actually three full years. Okay. It doesn't matter if you have all the prerequisites like I do, yeah. No, because it's nursing courses are three years specifically. Okay. I don't see any um, questions in the chat, but. Um... Yep, I put my contact information if anyone else has questions. Um, feel free to reach out um, to me specifically or either one of us. Any last questions? Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, we have students who, just like Martha right here, <laughs> who is about to finish up. They're interested in the RN, BSN bridge uh, program. And, and for those who we still have, um, those students who may come to PIT may not want the our LPN. Um, we try to, you know, help them um, get through the when it comes to the allied help pre nursing, but they want to RN. So, do you have that on your website as far as the prerequisite prerequisites for that as well? We actually, yeah, we actually do. Um, if you go to our website and just type in transfer. Um, okay. We'll link you to our transfer webpage and then it will say interested in transfer nursing. It'll tell you exactly what those prerequisites are. Um, if you wanted to um, reach out again to me or to Josh um, and set up an appointment, we can have that conversation. And okay. Sarah, we can also set up a specific, a, you know, if we want a specific, uh, specific event for transfer nursing, yeah. um, we can definitely do yeah. that. Yeah, I'm thinking that's going to be a really good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if there are no other questions, Lauren, thank you so much. Thank you. For doing thank you, it. Lauren. If thank I you. can have you, Lauren, um, just did you, you put your information in the chat? I did. Great. Thank you so much for, for coming out and doing this. I really, really appreciate it. We all really appreciate it. A lot of good information about the transfer process and a lot of good information um, about Newman University. So I'm really glad that we were able to put this together. So thank you very much.